the final installment of the Paladin Prophecy, a great finale for this great, great trilogy. And well, hello, fellow bug questers, it is I, Aaron the Bug Quester, and today I got this great bug, the Paladin Prophecy Rogue. By Mark Frost, one of their own has betrayed them. And well, let's get right on to it. Okay, so last time we ended off was us finding out that Franklin, grandfather of Will, is actually alive, he's kicking, he's around 96, and he seems to be somehow fine, and he's a bit of a psychopath lunatic, and he thinks that by tricking the entities in the Never Was, they would be able to get a photic technology, this really advanced technology that these guys have been creating, and genetically mutate humans to make them evolve faster. And he thinks that that's all they're gonna do. After all, the other team had no way to get to the Earth from the Never Was. Well, is he right? We'll find out. Meanwhile, Will is starting to formulate a plan. First off, we all know that Brooke is literally one of the baddies, she's a spy. So Nick, the plan is, Nick sedates her, and, to, and Nick, Elise, and AJ, you know, the AJ as in the smart one, he's growing smarter by every second, Elise, who can use her vocal cords and just send sound waves to destroy enemies, and she's also very pretty, which also helps, and, and, yeah, and Nick who is a bit of a stupid person, but his fighting moves is one of the best, and he literally fights really, really well with the machete, and yeah. Basically, he's kind of helpful. And these four, with, Cor which, with Coach Jericho, who is a sort of shaman who can shapeshift into different animals, and he is very, very strong. And these four will go towards where Will is. He's having dinner with his grandfather. I, I, I don't know if we should call him that because he's a bit of a demented beeping. Yeah, we don't need to talk about him. Anyway, while he's there, these guys will rush in and grab the carver, carve themselves into the Never Was, and rescue Dave. Why? Because they're pretty sure that an invasion is coming from the uh, Never Was, and that the army is pretty much prepared to march into the earth and kill everyone. Which also basically means that we kind of need Dave's help. Because the hierarchy, which is like the gu spiritual guardians of humans, of the human race, and these guys are like super cool and they're super powerful and they're already dead so they can't really die. And these immortal beings, they need their help. But the thing is, Will can't contact the hierarchy. Therefore, they need to rescue Dave, and Dave would would reach out to the hierarchy, who crash down on these evil never was monsters and entities, and they could get rid of them, and the Earth could be saved after all. And so they follow through with their plan. They manage to grab the carver, subdue the ones who's guarding it, and together they go into the never was. Unfortunately, they're separated. Will and Elise, who walked in with their hands held together happened to be anyway, they ended up together, and they had to fight through a couple monsters on the way, and they found AJ, and they rescued him from seemingly a swarm of bees that could probably kill people, monster bees, I, I don't know what to call them. And then they go on, and they go towards where Nick is, they, they find Nick fighting living plants who try to kill him, and Will finds out that he can communicate with these with these creatures which with these plants and he he finds out that all these plants are connected and that these plants know where coach Jericho is and so they go along and they find out that these snake people are keeping coach Jericho in a cage and they're about to eat him so they manage to rescue him fight their way out of there and then, according to the information that the plants had given him, Dave was in a huge fortress, guarded by an army of hundreds of thousands. Yeah, things aren't looking too good for us. And so they put on a disguise. They basically raid another of these army 
armies, and they take their armor, and together they just march into the fortress. And there, and there, after they manage to trick the guards using their mind controlling powers, and they manage to go in, and they find Dave in his full wayfarer form. Huge golden wings behind him, his a gleaming white sword about to be drawn in about to be fighting. And he looked absolutely magnificent and he's also huge. And he seems to be trapped in a sort of diamond cage. And diamonds are kinda of hard to break. Meanwhile, AJ uses his just just increasing IQ and to know that perhaps Elisa's sound waves can break through. And Elise tries, but she doesn't have enough enough in her vocal cords in order to break through to the diamond. Now this Ah, oh, for goodness sake. Really? Okay. So and Elise doesn't manage to break through. But they realize that perhaps if they hit one critical point in the diamond they can neatly cut it in half, of course with incredible force. Coach Jericho, the shaman who's shifted into a giant grizzly bear, and Nick, who's a muscle-bound man with super, almost superhuman strength and endurance, together they smash through the diamond, hitting its one critical spot that AJ had found and pointed out to the two muscle mans, and they managed to free Dave. And Dave, after healing up sufficiently, asks Will what the plan is, and Will tells him of this huge carver thing. Now, what the huge carver thing is, is like this huge portal that seems to be about to be made so that all these monsters from the Never Was could cross into our world. And the thing is, they will be invisible to humans, which also means that if my if these guys weren't invisible, then probably the U.S. Army could probably take him out. Come on, we have guns. They have swords. I mean, what are they supposed to do? Shoot us with a bow, but but they're invisible, which means you know it's kind of hard for our dear U.S. Army to just go in and shoot them because they're invisible. What are we supposed to do? And so they need to stop them from creating the huge Carver portal thing. And so, together, they make their last stand, breaking the portal with some explosives that AJ has, and finally, they carve their way out of there, and it is over. And Brooke has a little bit of a redemption arc, but I'm not really sure about that. And Brooke is sent over to Europe, and it's all over, and finally, the book ends with one message from AJ. It is our great rarest possession, more precious than any treasure from nature, god or man. It cannot be bought, sold, traded, or stolen. You only have so much of it, and you never know when it will run out. So you mustn't waste it or just let it pass, or heaven forbid, ever try to kill it. It is time. Spend your time wisely, for if you can master this one simple and elusive skill, my friends, you will fully and truly be alive. And it, the book ends with that nice, hopeful message. Now, it was a great book, but I do need to point out some problems with it, though. First off, um, the th part where they free Dave, I felt like it wasn't intense enough. Like, there needed to be some sort of guardian or something. I mean, sure, they were trying to break the diamond, but all in all, it was pretty easy. And since David's, I'm Dave is a freaking kick-ass hierarchy agent that can turn into a giant angel... With a golden sword, with a gleaming white sword that can kill all these monsters, pretty much. You know, I feel like maybe the fight for him could have been a bit more intense. After all, he's kind of like the trump card. If he's free, everything's pretty much fine. That is my first point. Second point, everything felt a bit rushed. Like, everything was great. It pulled me in, and I read through it. I read through it. it was, it's great. Everything's great. But it felt rushed. It felt like... He, the author was trying to tie up loose ends left and right, and it really, like, the climax could have been a lot more intense, and, like, definitely a lot of the parts, like, for example, like, Harry Potter, at least the last ten chapters of it is, like, the Battle of Hogwarts and the big climax, and that's what it kind of needed at the end. Like, usually in the climax, there's, like, phases where there's ups, whoa, the cavalry here, the cavalry's here, and then down, 
Oh no, um, the bad guys have another secret weapon, and another up, oh, we have this secret weapon, and the main character developed this new ability, and then down, a couple of times like that to make it a lot more intense, and then finally, the final solution, the main character defeats the bad guy, and managed to, like, save the world. That's how it should be, not like this, okay, we need to free Dave, okay, he's free, basically we're all good now, and then just, straight up just mowing through these monsters, breaking the carver easy peasy, almost dying in the process, but that's normal, and then just carving themselves out of there, it lacked in several ways in intensity and in more of the climax needed a lot more detail. My third point is this last message about time. Um, like, this is a great message. Like, I would live by something like this. Like, this, how time's a rarest possession, and we need to master using our time wisely or whatever, but... How in the world does that connect with the plot of the book? If that's the last message that the author wanted to give us through the book, then I, as a reader, should have felt it through the book somehow, somewhere. Except the fact I didn't feel it anywhere. It was out of nowhere. By the end of the book, the author should have communicated his, his or her message to us, and we should have like subconsciously kind of acknowledged it, and this guy, finally, he's just saying it because, you know, as like a confirmation, like a cap off. It just felt like it came out of nowhere, it didn't connect too well with the book, and even if there are parts that somehow connect, if I didn't feel it, a lot of, the chances are a lot of people aren't gonna feel it. So that is my critical reception of the book. However, I do think it is a very worthwhile reading book, and the plot was amazing, and the character development was are a little bit bad because I don't understand like the character development broke and Will's just the same and all in all I think it was it could have been a lot better especially since the first two books were like so much better than this one but I think it did a good job I think it did its best and I think it is a worthwhile book to read although I don't know what your you guys will opinion on this one will be and like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester, it is a great book. Maybe lacking in some areas, it definitely could have been improved or better, but it is a great book. A fitting finale. Well, could have been better, like I've said multiple times. But it is what it is, and it is a great read. Have a great day.